So American Underdog, the Kurt Warner story. Yeah. You play Kurt Warner. I do. Yeah. And this premiered last night in and Los the premiere Angeles. Was last night. In, yeah. Where? Man Chinese. And how much fun was it? It was super fun. I mean, you know, I mean, you 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 go and make a thing. You believe in it. You hope that it all comes together. I've seen it. I I feel like it's all there. You know, I'm proud of it. We right. made it in the middle of the pandemic and all the craziness and um. And then you go and do all the work and doing the press and and then it and then it's here. And then you're like, okay, well, I hope and it's not even really open, right? So it's like, you know, we premiered last night, but it doesn't open until Christmas. So right. I still won't really know what critics or people or whatever think about it. But Right. This will have aired. This will have aired by the time the, yeah, the, the movie will by, be by out. The so if you're out. listening to this, folks, I hope the movie's out. You, the movie's out. The movie's and, out. And hopefully you've seen it. And if you haven't, please go see it. And if you do see it, I hope you enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, then F you. No, then, no, uh, then no, you know. No F you's? No. I mean, people are allowed to not enjoy things. Yeah, I enjoy it. I'm I was going to go a different way with that joke. I wasn't just going to like <laughs> lambast people for not liking my fucking and if you movie, don't you like idiots. it, if you don't like it, what? <laughs> and then kick rocks. Then watch Shazam. No, I don't know. <laughs> then yeah, then watch Shazam. There you go. Let's watch Shazam. I'm proud of it. I, I really do think we made it uh, a good little movie and it's got so much heart heart and 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 hope i mean it, and faith and you know there's it's it's a very inspiring story it's a true story kurt warner you know he was uh he was this you know good old boy from iowa always wanted to be the next joe montana and then uh, didn't get a lot of play in college in um, northern iowa uh university but he got just enough where he got this last minute you know a tryout with the packers right out of college and and he he miffed it. He just he couldn't step up to that occasion. It was it was way too much for him in that moment. Wow. Uh, he was a great player, but I mean, there was a lot. You know, he's watching Favre throw throw passes in front of him. You know, as they're going through like training camp, he's like, "What is this? This is insane." So then that doesn't happen, and then he kind of just he goes and wanders in the wilderness for a while. He had met Brenda, his now wife. He that, wanders in the wilderness. He just takes away. He goes away from football. Well, yes and no. So like in the in the midst of all this, he meets his now wife Brenda. And she's such an integral part of their entire story. And, you know, uh, he he in large part became the man that he is, the leader he is and the quarterback that he was because of her love and her faith in him and wow. his love and her faith in in her and th and her children. She uh, had two kids at the time. Her oldest son Zach and their and her baby daughter Jesse and he took them on and he took them on as a twenty one year old you know college kid essentially because he just he felt uh, he felt this, this to... yeah he felt this love for them and he and this compulsion and yeah absolutely and I think you know very much God I mean their their journey is so incredibly blessed in the ways it's all kind of worked out but ultimately you know she was this twenty four year old divorcee with two kids and her oldest son or her her oldest who, who her son Zach. He was dropped uh, as a baby on his head oh. by her former husband, and he ended up having uh, intellectual disabilities. And so she was quite a package, you know, as as yeah, a young mother. Sure. And and uh, and I think you know partly because Kurt grew up also in a with a single mom, for, you know, a lot of his life, and he and his brother. And so I think that there was this, you know, that that story was already kind of being laid. The groundwork was already being laid a little bit in his heart and his mind. And, and he could recognize that and see that. And it's amazing that he could be that strong at 21. Oh yeah. Cause well, I, yeah. I, I'm 49 and I, I, Bro, you know, trust I, I, I can't take I, on a, yeah. I, mean, I can barely take on a dump in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. We know. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, it, it blows my mind that he, you know, he valued, he saw value in that. He wanted to keep seeing how that road went. And then they kept falling deeper in love. His uh, relationship with Zach um, right out of the gates. I mean, the first day he goes to like basically surprise Brenda at, at he had just met her at a honky tonk, like at a bar doing line dancing. He's like, I want to, I want to hang out with you. And she's like, you don't want to hang out with me on 24. I got two kids, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then he finds out where she lives and she, and he goes and just brought her flowers. And she was like in the middle of something and her son, Zach, Open the door. By the way, intellectually disabled, also blind. And he opens the door and he loved radios. He would listen to music all the time. And he opens the door and Kurt's there and he grabs Kurt's hand. I mean, the the details in the movie versus what actually happens in real life are very, very similar. I'm not sure that we got them, you know, to the point, but essentially yeah. this little boy leads him into the house and uh because he needs help with this radio. He needs his radio needs batteries and he can't get anybody to help him because his mom's getting ready to go to school or uh, work or whatever. And uh, and he goes and gets Kurt to go find him batteries and puts batteries in, and then he like wants him to lay down on the on the cool of the bath of the bathroom floor and just listen to music with him, and like that really happened, and it's really in the script. And I remember Jeez. getting to that point in the in the script, and I was like, I've never, 
seen something so pure. Like that seems like such a pure moment to have on a screen. And like the love that that starts building and the love that he starts building with Brenda. And anyway, their whole journey is amazing. And then ultimately he, yeah, he wasn't playing football. He couldn't play football. There was no football to be played. He was trying to figure out how to get another shot in the NFL. Um, they were super struggling, you know, scraping change out of uh, car doors to put gas in their tank. Like that, those types of, you know, things Good that a lot Lord. of us can relate to going through some harsh Iowa winters and all that stuff. And so he started stocking shelves at a grocery store, uh, the high V and he did that for, I don't know, six months to a year or something. And in the process wow. of that, this arena football had started to kind of pop up, but right. he was, he kept it at an arm's length because he felt like, and I totally understand too. I could totally understand his mentality of feeling like, well, that's, if I go do that, then I'm giving up on the real thing. This is the this is the JV. So this is whatever that is. But but I'm you know what I mean. Like this is where guys end up if they can't play NFL or they're done with the NFL. Right. And I don't want to believe that. And I you know I think there was just so much interesting up and down and in, in both he and Brenda's journey and their journey together um, that there was a lot of just you know I don't know humbling uh, almost in some respects right because he gets to this point where he's like I don't want to stock shelves anymore. And I, I can make better money and I get to do a thing that I, I really love doing that gives me purpose, which is right. to go have a ball in my hand, like Play football, football basketball. Yeah, he, he did it all, but football specifically. And uh, and so, you know, he he gives in to the uh, to this guy who had the arena team, um, the Iowa Barnstormers in in Iowa the local arena team and he'd been bugging Kurt like come on you got to come play for me he saw him play in college or whatever knew he got a shot with the Packers but didn't go anywhere and Kurt kept like no 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 and then finally it's like okay fine let's go play I, I mean this is such a compelling amazing story yeah it's insane it's it's it's, it's one of those things where well hold on it gets better well you know the story right you what? know the, the end of it and all that jazz no that's why I'm ready for the movie so you know well, don't you, give it away I don't really know the end of it I know wait. he makes the Rams yes but you know. know what happened with the Rams well, he ends up winning the Super Bowl. Yes, and he won. And <laughs> well, hold on, let's, uh, anyway, so point is, he goes and plays arena, and in doing so, he actually gets some looks now, again, from the NFL, uh, and ultimately does get this opportunity with the Rams. And uh, he he was a, you know, his his first year in the, in the league, he was like 27, very old rookie. You don't have rookies coming into the NFL at 27. 27. 27, I think, yeah, 27. And then the next, and he didn't play at all. 20, and he was like a third backup quarterback second season second uh, backup quarterback or something like that i think he had made it up to the number two spot trent green is their number one who was a very talented quarterback at the time and everybody had a lot of high hopes high hopes for him and um, um vermeil was their head coach he, had, he it was like his kind of cinderella story too because after philadelphia he kind of went off and into the his own wilderness and came back and so he's head coaching. Mike Martz is the offensive coordinator who has this incredible offense he's worked out with all of these incredible tools in this team. And the Rams like really have a shot. And then Trent Green in preseason down injury, uh, in season injury, uh, season ending injury. Wow. And that's how he got a shot. Well, yeah, but here's the thing. I mean, the Rams also like, I'm sh they were calling around. They, they were like, is there anybody? Because you know, this guy was still this untested 28 year old now rookie. Yeah. We've got Kurt Warner in the, in, in, the, in our pocket, but yeah. you know, let's get someone yeah. else. Cause well, this, he let's can't try. Carry yeah. And, and right. look at the end of the day, it was Kurt's because no one else was available. Nobody else worked. It was all, it and they're like, and so fate. Dick Vermeil, and there's this famous, yeah, very famous, uh, uh, press conference. Cause there was a lot of heat also, like the media was like, what are you, there was all these, you know, um, stories and things going on like ESPN, like who's this, are they going to, you know, put the whole, the weight of the team and the, and the season on Ooh. this guy's shoulders, this guy who just came out of the arena league and all that. So there's all that narrative going around. And then Dick Vermeil, he has this press conference and he goes, we are going to rally around Kurt Warner and we're going to play good football. I mean, it's this really great clip. It is. It almost seems fictitious. It does. It does. If you tell us, if, you know, when, when this all happened in real life, when, then Kurt steps in and then basically leads the team as a 28 year old rookie with very few snaps that he ever, you know, he takes the team all the way to the Super Bowl, wins the Super Bowl. He wins MVP of both the season and the Super Bowl and was making league minimum when he did it. Like there were guys league who league minimum. What's league minimum? Back I don't then? know what it was back then. But it but wasn't I, a lot of money. No, but I but I know that there are people in the organizations, the football organizations that like 
tend to the, and by the way, it's a very big job, tending to like the fields, right? Like the greensmen for like, to, they take care of sure. some of those people. I believe I heard it quoted. Some of those people make more than what he was making as league minimum. So the guys that were, you know, tending to the fields were like, cool, this guy, <laughs> who is this wow, guy? And dude. what's he doing? So things changed obviously after he won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, they, they <laughs> had a payday. A, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that, you know, <laughs> you don't know that part of it. Who knows? Who knows? Right. You know, but, um, but at the end of the day, it was just this incredible thing. We all happened, you know, we were watching it happening in real time. I was, I was 19, living in Ventura, watching this crazy shit go down. I was like, this is history happening in our lifetime. Like, what the heck? And then also because, you know, being a person of faith and he, he, he being a person of faith, there was that spiritual kind of connection too, and even more inspiring in that regard. And uh, so, yeah. And that are, was- Are you guys close? I would say we're pretty close at this point. Yeah. Was it, was it weird in the beginning? Because it's like, I'm playing you. Where you kind of like, you know, I want to do you right, man. I'm, you know, this is, I'm, I'm only as good as the script here. I'm going to yeah. give you some personality. What fears did you have going into that? I mean, the fears that, look, when we take on a fictitious character, there's nobody that can really hold us. Well, a to, real character. Oh, you're saying, no, you're, no, no, you're no, no. Example, I'm, I'm, example. Exactly. Yeah. Example. No, Kurt is very fictitious. He's very he's fake. A, he's a fake person. He is a phony man. 